What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Michael Balco Show. Today, I am joined by the number 11 overall pick in the 2013 NFL Draft, a three-time BCS National Championship at Alabama, and a current NFL free agent, the one, the only, DJ Fluker. How we doing, brother? We doing, we doing great. We doing great. I like that introduction, man. That, that's pretty dope. <laughs> <laughs> So that, is that, that definitely one of the best introductions of your uh, of your podcasting career, right? Oh yeah, that's, that's the best I, best I've, I've ever heard. <laughs> All right, up. sounds good. I'm gonna clip that for sure. I'm clipping that. All right, <laughs> first and foremost, we got to rep the hometown. You were born in the Big Easy out there in New Orleans. You stayed there um, just before Hurricane Katrina, um, and then moved over to Alabama. Tell us a little bit about your childhood, your early life, and how Katrina, you know, impacted you and your family. I mean, um. Basically, I mean, growing growing up in a in a poverty type of town, you know, I, um, I'm from the lower the, the lower uh, math ward, you know, growing up there, I mean, it was, it was rough. I mean, things. I don't think I could have been in a, in a worse predicament, you know. But my mom, you know, she worked she worked two jobs. Uh, we also me and my brother, we I had a I got a younger brother. We're like a year apart. We we, we used to cut grass on weekends just to pay bills and and uh, make sure we were able to provide for our two sisters as well. Um, we we'll, we'll sitting there like like you know like twelve or eleven, so, yeah. So we 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 got it out. Um, then I ended up going to my eighth grade year, first time I ever playing football. I had a coach come knock on my door and tell me, "Hey man, you got to come play." I was like, "Man, I don't play no football. I play basketball, you know." And uh, his name was Co- was uh, Coach Dawson. Um, the, when I when I was going to school down there, and I ended up playing. I ended up liking it. It was cool. Um, you know, um, I ended up meeting some. Cool kids through playing football, of course, and my coaches also uh, recommended me to, to meet to meet like other coaches from high school to go play. Figure figure what what I want to do it uh, going transitioning transitioning to our uh, high school. So um, I met a coach named Coach Dax. He was uh, McDonald thirty five in New Orleans uh, uh, high school. He was one of the coaches, the football coaches there. He he had, he had some high interest in, in me to come coming to that school, and uh, I was going there for a little bit. Uh, I, I was going there for, for workouts during the summertime, but then Katrina hit, and then 2000, Katrina hit 2005, like a little bit late, late summertime 2005, and I wanted to Mobile, Mobile, Alabama. I ended up going down there and I'm playing for a school called McGill Tulane. At the time, there was a coach named Steve Savarese. He's also the athletic director for Alabama as well, at this uh, for state of Alabama, actually. Um, I, I played down there for like, a, like two, I want to say two years. I, I was down there um, my freshman, sophomore year, playing high school ball down there. Um, uh, we were kind of struggling at the time. We were struggling. We still had like a, a little female chick coming there every now and then. But um, we ended up standing like a, with a couple relatives back and forth. Um, and sometimes we slept, sometimes we, we slept, slept inside of our car. You know, I mean, that was, that was kind of rough too. So I mean, I'm, not a lot of people knew that high school that, that we were kind of homeless, going back and forth at the time. But we kind of kept it to ourselves. And and I, my sophomore year, I ended up meeting a kid named Boville. That that became my brother there, brother right there. Um, and I ended up meet, meeting his parents, which are which are the Bills, which I call like my parents because they're my second parents that I have. And they were great. They were great. They were uh, helping us along the way along. Along with the school, you know, they they kind of took us in, and you know, um, a, a lot of the time we didn't know when we gonna when we had our bed, but like how I say is like sometimes we sometimes there were days we didn't know where we were gonna get our get our meal from, but you know, luckily luckily we had people that have donate food and and, and help us out like along like like along the way, and honestly, I'm just really grateful that I had the opportunity to actually make it. Make it out of there along with my family, and I and I'm going to get a scholar, uh, scholarships, uh, college, and everything in the process. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of how, how 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 I started off. Yeah, man, and that's crazy. I have a little bit of a similar background. Um, you know, I was I was once homeless and having to you know figure out my next meal and stuff like that too. And now we're sitting here talking to DJ Fluker on a uh, Facebook Live and all that good stuff. And it's it's crazy, bro. How like you know. Like at some point in your life, you get to a point where like, it's just like, damn, you know, I'm using that previous struggle as, as fuel and here we are, you know what I mean? It's dope. Um, so I, I definitely can, I don't want to say relate, but you know, we, we both been there and it's dope that we're able to sit here and, and relate on that level. 
Um, so let's talk about high school football for you. It was a wild ride, my boy. It was a wild ride. You were originally a dominant defensive lineman, but you switched to offensive tackle your senior year. You wound up being a five-star recruit, the top offensive tackle in the nation, the dog, man, the top guy at the offensive line position. What was that like for you, you know, as a young, you know, 17, 18, 19 year old? And how tough was it to choose a school to commit to, bro? Because you had every you had every single school that you wanted to go to ever, you know, right there waiting for you. How tough was it to pick? Um, so I'm gonna be really brutally honest. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't. Uh, well, coming from where I come from, we didn't really have internet, internet like that, so I didn't know how big of a big deal football really was until like my senior year. Um, I didn't even know I was like at that top level um, as a senior, you know, being a five-star recruit. You know, I was still kind of learning because, you know, when you, you come from the hood, you come to the streets, you don't have internet. You don't have, I mean, I, I had a flip phone <laughs> for God's sake, you know. Um, but, you know, I, and eventually once I learned that I was like this, this guy, just like the top recruit, man, it was, it was, I don't know how to explain it. It was like, I never thought I could be this, this player, but I, I, I worked hard. I think because my coaches who I had at the time always kept me humble and always kept me on the right path. So I, I didn't really get into the media until later on, you know, but picking a school, I'd say it was super hard. Cause I, I seen Pete Carroll and Pete Carroll was at USC. You know, I was like, I heard of him before. And then you had Coach Saban, who was the coach for Miami Dolphins back in 2000, or 2004, I believe, 05, you know, 2004. He was, he was coaching the Dolphins. So I was like, and then at the time Alabama had Shula, which is, you know, the, the son of the great Shula, of course. Uh, he was at Alabama. So I was like, and LSU had, what, uh, I think less miles at the time. So it was like, I, I was looking around at all these schools, like, what could give me the best opportunity, opportunity to go play? And I took, I took a few visits, man. I even went to Auburn. I didn't like Auburn. I didn't know. I, I was always been an LSU Tiger all day, you know. But I had to go to Auburn just to check it out. And I went on, on, on a few visits. It was cool, but it was too country for me. Couldn't do it. I'm a city boy, man. I can't do that. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I remember going, going to Alabama. I mean, I, I had a lot of like a lot of influence about, about going. You know, I had a friend named Sadio Corley and uh, Felix Jones, who I also played high school football with. And Felix Jones and, and Sadio Corley ended up going to, to LSU. That's where I wanted to go, where that, which I was starting to go. But I ended up going to Alabama. I met, I met Coach Saban. I uh, went to a few of their games. And I was like, you know what? It's not so bad. It's very welcome. Like, I, I, felt, I felt at home when I went there, went to the locker room, you know. And it's like, dang, man, one day I could probably, probably, probably play here, play in the NFL one day. Who knows? You know, at the time, I was thinking about graduating and getting a job, honestly, because I was the one I'm trying to, trying to help my parents. So, you know, this football stuff was like, it was kind of secondary until I understood it for the full potential of it, I guess. That's crazy. That's so crazy. I don't think I've ever heard that from a number one at any any position. Like, they're always just like – yeah, man, like it was wild, this, that, and like, you know, <laughs> but like you're, you're just like, bro, I didn't even realize the scale I was on, which is uh, dope. No, no, I didn't. I didn't even, I didn't, and that's just the honest truth. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't understand because I, I, from where I come from, man, honestly, like I can tell you for a second, like my, my senior year of high school, right, I had a torn labrum. And honestly, I, I had quit football. I quit football like my senior year. I, I wasn't going. Wasn't going to play because I tore it my junior year. I was in, I was playing high school football in Mississippi, and it's kind of a long story with that. But I mean, we have to turn it on, turn it on, there because it'll take take, take take long to explain. But my, my senior year, I, I had a torn label, and I ended up a coach named Todd Watson. He's a high school coach, coach, high school coach at Foley High School, along with where I met Julio Jones at too. I mean, Julio, you know. Uh, Playing, playing high school. Uh, well, we didn't play basketball together because I missed him about football season. You know, he he ended up in the bar graduating, of course. So I, I was walking through the hallway. This guy, uh, one of my coaches, the coach had seen me. He's like, "Hey, ain't you DJ Fluker?" I was like, um, "Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, or whatever, like like that." And he was like, um, "You don't, you don't, you, don't you play football?" I said, "Yeah, I used to play football. I don't play no more because now, because now I'm in the work world now. I'm trying, I'm trying to give me a job, work." Make some money for, so we can so we can have so we can have food on the table and stuff like that. He's like, man, why don't you come? Why don't you come play uh, football? I was like, 
I don't think so, man. I said I will play, but, but for my shoulder's point. Now, yeah, think about it. I'm only like 17, so I don't understand the surgery, whole surgery process, because I'm oblivious to it. Because I've never really been, I thought I'd just heal up, I, I, I'll do whatever, you know? So I said, tell you what, what if I told you there's a way to have, to, to, get, to get your shoulder fixed, and would you play football? I said, if you do that, yeah, sure, I'll play football. Uh, sure, well, why not? You know, why not give it a go? And I did, and uh, and I'm actually glad I did. I'm I'm actually glad Coach Watson. He also he also coach at Alabama now. Um, I seen him like recently on recently on on my pro day, and he was like, "Aren't you glad years later that you play football?" I was like, "Coach, honestly, I'm very grateful that I stuck with it because I promise, without you, I probably would not have, would not have played football ever again." So yeah, I'm. I, it was a very grateful moment for me. That's crazy. And, and like you mentioned, you wound up taking your talents to Alabama to play under coach Nick Saban and their incredible coaching staff and all the trainers they have there. Um, you had an incredible career there. You won three national championships. You were a first team All-American in 2012. What was it like playing at Alabama? What was it like playing under Nick Saban? And why are the why is the roll tide so damn good year after year, bro? I mean, uh, I mean, if you look at their staff, a lot of them have coasted it, coasted it, coasted it in the NFL. A lot of those guys carry um a swagger a swag, a swagger should i say like very very confident and when i was there we had coach cochran coach kirk was smart coach McElwain. um shoot I, I, I coach pinger was there now he's also a scout now uh jeff stoutland who's at the eagles coaching there where we had, we had a great staff of uh, of coaches um that that actually understood ball and also we had so much fun playing it that the game, the practice was so much harder than the game. And, you know, when you can say the practice was harder than the game, I mean, come on, man. That that's these volumes, you know. You, but, you can tell because I mean, you guys are you guys are playing against the best when you play against yourself in practice. You know what I mean? And then like these games, y'all were blowing out people by like 50, 60 that year, bro. Like all like throughout your whole career, y'all were just laying it on people. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we, we should have a great defense, like we. LeRon, you, you had Rolando McClain, Dante Hightower. You had Brandon Desert. You had a uh, Marcel Darius out there. <laughs> I mean, Mark Barron, who played Mark Barron, Nico Johnson. Yeah, all these great top talented players out there. You think it's every single day. So when you, when, it, when it does come to when, when it does come down down to playing guy playing guys on Saturday, it was so much easier. I'm like man, this guy's so weak. Oh, next guy, let's go. And, and you know, and you build that confidence, and then you become this powerhouse team that they can't be beat because you know the best the best thing we was the best thing we did was like we had a, a strength coach that you know that took time with, I mean he, he he yelled so much go, oh my god he yelled so much all the time you're like yeah 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 you know it, it, you don't see that as a 18 year old kid like man this is how it's supposed to be all the time but also I would say that. Being under Coach Saban, it, it taught you a lot. It taught it taught you that like it taught, he taught you how to be be a man. He taught he taught you how to carry yourself as, as, as more than just an athlete, just more of a student athlete. He taught he taught you how to put your life in structure, and I think that helped a lot of us play not on, not only better in the classroom, but also play better play better like on the field, on like, like like playing football as well. I think that helped everyone, even though. We all were kind of scared of him a little bit, you know. His coach saved me, you know what I'm saying? A little, a little different, but he helped us become great, great, great young, great young men. I can't speak for everybody, but I go, go, I can speak for the guys that that did do do the right thing. Yeah, and you know, following your time at Alabama, you know, you get invited to the NFL scouting combine. What's it like transitioning from being a student athlete? You know, you're under Nick Saban, who you know is arguably, I think not even arguably, better than, you know, a lot of the coaches who were there evaluating you at the NFL scouting combine. Um, so what is it just like in general going from, you know, a NFL centric, you know, program like Alabama to being a pro football player? I say, I say Alabama, everything was structured out for you. Uh, I'll say that everything was structured out from what you were doing in the off season, training and while you were in school. But I said you go to you go to the NFL and when you kind of like leave that structure, you had to find that find that structure again. I say you go to the NFL team, you know it's all business. It's all about you trying to 
make your way, make your name into the NFL because you're also taking someone else's job or trying to play over someone that also got a, fa- a family to feed. You know, and that's how you look at it. It's like, uh, I got to go out here and take someone else's job. You know, it's no more like friend, there's no more of the friend factor. You got to go play to earn money for your family and for, for your future and for your well-being. I think that's what it comes down to, and that's, that's really the difference. You know, and then when uh, off-season hit, you got to find your own structure. That's no more telling you to go, hey, it's time to go work out. You have to find your own structure and time then. And, 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 you know, a lot of kids are not used to having freedom. You know, they're not used to having freedom, like, um, doing things on their own. Because, like, I can tell you, like, my rookie season, you know, I had structure uh, – when I was getting like playing, well, I had structured before I even went to the combine and all that. I had structured. Yes. I had everyone manage me, like, you doing this, you don't work out here at this time, be here this time, sleep at this time. You know, it was all structured. But when you had yeah, that first off, my first off season, man, I was like, whoa. And I, I, I was playing at the time, I was playing with the Chargers. I said, hey, so are we, come, are we coming back to work out in like, like a month, come back to work out? It's like, no, man, you go home. I go home, and you know, it kind of caught me off guard. I was like, I've never been able to go home and hang with my family. And then I did, I was like, wow, this is crazy. So, this job only lasted six months out of the year, <laughs> seven months <laughs> out of the year, maybe. Yeah, if you go to Super Bowl, so it kind of, I've never had that kind of freedom. And then it kind of took off. And I was like, okay, and I got to find a way to work out. So, you got to find places to work out, or you want to work out in hot, cold, cold weather, whatever, you know. And that was like a big blow to me because I never understood I had that much freedom before. I guess if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. And a lot of people say that when it goes like when they go from high school to college, too. But like, you know, when you're going to a place like Alabama and that has so much structure, so much prestige of being the best year after year, you know, you're going into that structured environment. Whereas like a lot of other colleges, the reason they're not as successful is because they're letting their student athletes just run around willy nilly. But, you know, like for you, it's like different, you know, like you had that structure, you know, through high school, through college and you get to the NFL, and that's where you found your freedom, which is crazy. Which is crazy. Yeah, man, it was it was a it was a fun time, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you were part of that PFWA All Rookie Team. You know, you did a good job out there. You were balling, um, and you were part. You know, kind of going back a little bit, you were part of the, one of the most talented offensive line groups uh, drafts ever. Um, you were the eleventh overall pick in the twenty thirteen NFL Draft. What was your NFL draft process like, and how did it feel to finally reach that milestone? Honestly, I wasn't. Honestly, I didn't really think about going to the draft because I was like, because the grade I got was a second round grade, late first. And I was like, man, why do I need to go to the, go to the draft for it? You know what I'm saying? Like, but I didn't went. I, I, I ended up going. My agent talked me into going, so I was like, all right, sure, why not? Why, why not? You know. And and I did. And I'm going. And the process was cool. I got I got a cool a taggy cut suit, which was pretty dope. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I went to a couple of events. I met a couple of, like guys I still play with play with today. Um, not all of not all the guys I met still play, but a majority I say forty percent of them still play that are, are are in my draft class. Still still play still play now. Which, which, which is, to me, was pretty cool, you know. And honestly, I met a, I met some good friends, and um, I also met Gino during during that time too. Gino Smith, man, congrats to him. He got a big contract, you know. And to meet him during that process, so I mean, I I think that I met some great, I met some 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 great friends during that time as we were going through the draft in New York. And gonna have to go. Honestly, it's pretty cool. I probably I probably would do it again. You'll probably have to go and uh, reunite with my boy Gino out there in Seattle. What's up? I don't know, man. I don't know. If he he care. Well, what's kind of happy to see me? <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. We'll talk about that a little later. We'll talk about that. You were drafted by the Chargers. Tell us about day one in the NFL and what that transition from college to the NFL was like. Um, my, I guess, was, I guess, uh, day one, day one going for my rookie year. I mean, it was cool. You know, um, I already knew what to, what to expect. I had a good online coach. He was, he was really good, good at coaching me, doing things that I needed to do. The organization at the time was, was pretty young too. 
um, especially the guys that just got there, uh, co- coaches were. But it, it was cool. The game speed, I thought it was gonna be faster, but it wasn't. It wasn't too. It wasn't too fast from playing the SEC. You know, um, I don't play against some fat, some really fast like these D linemen. But honestly, it wasn't even, even even that much of a difference. I had to work at it, of course. But after that, after I got it done. It took me like uh, two about two months to get, to get to get down to game speed, and that was it. I transitioned pretty good because the offense was was very similar to what I used to run in college. So I mean, after that, you play fast. The more you know, the faster the faster you play. So I guess yeah. it, was, it was pretty fun. Good. Yeah, I mean, like I said, PFWA all rookie team your rookie year too. So that's always nice to get a little hardware at the end of the season, a little recognition. Oh. I play some left tackle, man. I'm going to tell you that. I tell you, man, it was a game. We played in um, – we had a game. We played Jacksonville. That, that's when everyone was my rookie year. And our left tackle went down, went down there. King Dunlap went down. And my coach comes to the sideline. and he said, hey, when you guys got to, when you guys got to go left tackle? <laughs> and uh, there was a guard named Jerry McClary. Uh, he was a veteran, of course. He was like, uh, Coach, I can't go play that talker. You know, I, I just had that metal rod in my leg, you know, and I just got back. I was like, well, I ain't going over there. I was thinking right tackle. And my, my coach looked at me and said, hey, flu. I said, what's up, Coach? He said, when the last time you played left tackle? I said, high school. <laughs> high school, left tackle. He said, you know what? He was like, your ass, your ass is going over there. <laughs> Yo, I had to go against Olive Branch. Uh, it was a kid named Branch. Uh, you know, uh, older, little older guy, he way older than me. I had to go over there and play left tackle. Man, that was the longest day of my life. Didn't know what I was doing. My feet, my feet was doing was going different directions because I was so used to playing on the right side, and I had my my, my feet had to change. So I'm playing like real timid, but I I did okay. I I, I did okay. We started running the ball, which made it a lot more easier on me. Because playing left tackle, playing pass pro, way different than playing right tackle pass pro. Yeah, you're stepping yeah, so. a whole different way. Like <laughs> it's crazy going from the right side to the left side is not as easy as the average fan may think it is. Oh man, hell no, it's not easy. Sorry about my French, but it's definitely easy. No, most definitely, definitely not, not at all. I actually, my my scrawny self played some some guard in a uh, high school. Proud of that. Did but, you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I was. I started off on the right side, and then they moved me over to the left side, but. Uh, cause most of our run plays would go to the right. And so I was so quick cause I was skinny and I would just pull, oh. you know, I would pull oh, all man. the time, bro. And, but I, I got away with all the holds though, bro. Cause I was skinny. I couldn't move the big dudes, bro. <laughs> hey, you was in the trenches, bro. Hey, yeah. hey, hey, very hey, respect, very respect. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yeah. That was, that was my glory days, man. Now my back hurts all the time. <laughs> <laughs> But it's cool. It's cool. So following your time in San Diego, you bounced around a couple teams. You went to the Giants, the Seahawks, like we talked about with Gino, um, the Ravens, Dolphins, Raiders, spent some time down in Jacksonville as well. Um, how does each team vary? And do you notice like whenever you're coming from like a different team, do you notice a pretty big like shift in culture and why certain teams are good and why certain teams are, you know, struggling, things like that? Uh I guess so. I mean, New York, when I got there, I don't know what was going on over there at the time. I mean, it was a lot of emotional stuff going on over there, I guess. Because you also have Odell, so, you know, Odell do, do his thing. Everyone kind of follow the line. <laughs> but, yeah, he, he's a baller, man. I got to tell you, that kid's a baller. But I went to the Giants. It, it, was a, it was a cool little time, I guess. I guess they didn't really know me, so they didn't really, really know what to expect from me. Until they got really, when they did get to know me and see how hard I play at practice, they was like, okay, this, this kid really can't play. You know, but it, it, it was all right. I mean, would I, would I have gone back during that, during that time on that 2013? Probably not. Probably a different team. Um, just, I'm just going to be honest about it. I mean, it ain't going to bother me now. Um, Chargers, Chargers were, were a decent organization. But my favorite one was probably uh, the Seahawks. Man, I had so much fun over there. Uh, playing, uh, I it's like when you go to Seahawks, it's like it's like being in college all over again. They have so much fun. Like they even play basketball in the TV room and, and like coaching working players. Man, it's it's a great time. That's why, I, and I see why those guys when they play for Coach Coach, Coach Carroll, I see why why they play the way they play. I see why they play with the passion for passion football because they make it they make it fun. It make it, it make it a, a like, 
if one guy messes up, okay, well now we're gonna pick this guy up and, and bring him a part of our team to, to 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 do better to do better uh, next time. Now when, and then when it's time to like when players get called out for certain things, another player will stick up for another player like you know, coach, that's my fault. I'm gonna get him better on that. And I I love that 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 mentality. It was like this is why they this team is so good every year because they they buy in to being great. They buy in to being great teammates. The coaches the coaches. Tell the players, hey, when they're messing up, they, they they don't kiss their ass when they're messing up. They tell them, hey, you're messing up. I need you to do better. They, they put them on the arms like, hey, now you see it again. Do better next time. And, and this is why this team, that ball club, is always consistently good. No matter if they got a quarterback or not a quarterback. They don't have a quarterback or a run game or not. They team they play they play as a team and, and collectively. And that's why I, I like to being over there so much because, I mean, it's, it's a great place to, a great, great, great place to play. No. From there, I went to to Baltimore. I made them play for the Ravens. Raven, Ravens are a great, classy or classy organization. Not that's not the Seahawks are, but but the Ravens are one of the classy business type organization. They have they have fun. You know, I mean, I I got there during COVID, of course, um, playing there. So I, I have I didn't really really see like the whole side of the Ravens, but they're but they're a great organization. Plus, my old line coach, my rookie year. And my, my first three years in the league was actually over there. So we all we all had a great, a great time, great time, like cracking jokes and stuff, of course. But I mean, they're they're a good solid or a good solid organization, more like older, mature um organization, I guess I should say. And I had a great time there too. You know, I ended up getting back out the tackle again, which is where I'm really dominant. And 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 my coach knew and my coach at coach at, at the charge uh my coach at the Ravens knew that. He said, I had you at tackle at charges. You, the tackle is where you dominate And I said, yeah, I do. I didn't give up I didn't give up no sacks that year either. Great that I went to 88 uh, overall uh, the, in the end of the season. And I played pretty damn, pretty damn solid at right tackle, back in my normal position. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we love we love a good normal position, bro. Because switching positions, bro, ain't it? It ain't it. <laughs> but that's no, one of your strong suits. That's what you were kind of known for is being able to play play all over the place, and you proved that you could, bro. Regardless, mm -hmm. but being able to play yeah, that I position, know. bro. Mm. Yeah, being a player, that was like a right tackle, man. It, it, it must say it was a challenge. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. And then, uh, so. You mentioned you mentioned Seattle, bro. I have to I have to say it because I'm from Seattle too. You know, I used to live up in there. You know, Puget Sound is beautiful. You know, the city of Seattle is incredible. So we love that. Uh, but I got a couple rapid fire questions for you now. What is your? Sorry, who is on your pregame playlist? My pregame playlist. Who's on the pregame? I have to go with Eminem. Lose yourself. All right, all right. Uh, That's um, Eminem. I got, I got Fifty Cent. Um, I also got Young Dolph. Um, who else? I can think. Uh, uh Michael Jackson, of course. Gotta have Bill Michael. Right. And all right. um, I think that's it so far. Very delicate. You're real slow. Who is, what is your go-to yeah, cheat day right meal? There. What's your go-to cheat day meal? My go-to cheat day meal? Um, you know, I would say it's a good ramen. A good ramen. Okay. I had some, when I was in New York, man, I went to, I went to a place called Rock and Ramen. Rock and Ramen is down in, in, in um New Rochelle. It was awesome. And I, I fell in love with ramen ever since then. Like a, like a not we talking about ramen noodle night. You're gonna get one of We told them an actual ramen spot. I think I think that's more that's that's more me. Bet bet who is the coolest celebrity you've ever met? Cool, cool, cool celebrity I ever met. Hmm, that's a good question. That's a good question. Hmm. I don't know, man. I've met so many people. 
I met so many people. I can't really tell you. <laughs> um, I guess Shaq. I I met Shaq. Shaq was I met Shaq in high school. Shaq, you know, Shaq gave me my first pair of Shaqs. Shaq, you know, I used to be used to be a He gave my first pair of Shaqs. I got I guess the Shaq. Shaq hey. was what probably be the guy. I met. he was pretty cool. Dope, big as hell, bro. Just make sure you tell me where you, you feel it or where you don't feel it. Yeah. My man, my man Channel needed two. to play O-line, bro. My man needed to be on the O-line. And he's an LSU legend, too, which is crazy. So, like, you know, it was just full circle for you. Well, he did play. You know, he did play. He went to go play left tackle at, at LSU, and he had hurt his wrist. And the basketball team, uh, had, uh, the coach had called him out for it. I remember that. I think it was he telling that story. Sorry, I think he took the, the right career – feel with the NBA anyway. And my man had a legendary career, bro. One of the best centers, if not the best center in NBA history. Tell me about a time you've tell me about a time you've had to overcome adversity and how'd you do so? It has to be a football, it has to be a game or just life in general. In general, my man, in general. I think uh Making my mind up recently, um, I know like about a year ago, I, I'm not playing football. I think that the time away really told me who my friend, who my friends were, who the people that cared about me as a person were. Um, you know, I think that really showed me a lot. And I was going through a hard time mentally because I've been doing going through a lot because I'm in I was dealing with a court case for, like, like for my daughter. I was going through stuff like that. I was in a domestic violence situation that could have really ended my career. And honestly, I was very grateful to have uh, a lot of people that cared about me. You know, at that time I was with the Ravens during that time and I did counseling, like mental counseling, probably like every other day while I, while I was there. So I was going, I was having a, was having a like a mental breakdown, honestly. And uh, honestly, I'm, Going through it for a little while, and how, how, how I got back from the one, it was still about me for me, not for me, but like for, for my kids as well. And so I just had to take time away to work on my family issues and, and things I had to deal with that. I guess in reality, that if I didn't have that family that cared about me and my friends that did stick around with me even when I didn't play football, I don't think I would be, I don't think I would have to be person right now uh, to be, be in shape, to be more mentally stable or where I need to be at, have more structure. I don't think I would have not got to that point as of right now where I can go back and go play football again if it wasn't for them. Good. Good, man. That's always good to hear. Um, like you just mentioned, you're you're geared up to play. You're geared up to make an NFL comeback. For those of you guys who are listening, my man DJ getting some work done right now. It's, it's so funny to like interview you while you're getting like work done. It's kind of, it's just really funny. Uh, but you're geared up to make an NFL comeback. Um, and you're like oh, yeah. much stronger. You lost some weight, bro. You put on some muscle. And, you know, you just participated in the Alabama Pro Day and just lit it up, bro. You're the talk of the town right now. You and Bryce Young, like it's wild. You think you hear Alabama Pro Day and it's you and Bryce Young, name and name. How pumped for you to get back to the league and how much interest have you received so far? Honestly, I really can't wait to go get back and get back, get back and plan. I am taking some time to get myself back right and um actually like get my get my get my muscle good, you know. That's what it come down to. So my brother. Speaking of Dino, <laughs> <there you go. laughs> what brother. up? Good guy. That's the man right there. That's crazy. We got a little Geno Smith cameo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just talking about him. <laughs> yeah, That's but crazy. I mean, honestly, uh, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to see what happens. I mean, you know, uh, I got a lot, 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 a lot of team interest. They, a lot of people are glad, are glad to see you back playing because, you know, um, office Lama, they're very hard to come by, right? Come by, like, at this moment. And so, so – I'm very, uh, I'm very happy. I feel very blessed, man. 
when I get an opportunity. So, I mean, honestly, I'm looking forward. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. And then one last question for you, DJ, and then we'll let you get back to your physical therapy and all that good stuff. But what is one piece of advice you could give to the, anybody listening to this podcast today? All right. Um, if I could get one piece of advice, I yep, tell, I tell guys, advice. never stop fighting, fighting for what you want. Don't be, uh, I would say, never stop fight, fighting for what you want. Don't be denied. Just because some one person tell you, you know, doesn't mean you have to like believe believe what they tell you. Because at the end of the day, a person a person's opinion of you does not define who you are and, and who your character is. You keep fighting, keep fighting for what you believe in, and you'll get it. Most definitely. Ladies and gentlemen, DJ Fluker, he's getting back into the NFL, you know, ball, boy balled out at the Alabama Pro Day. He's getting back to it. Uh, thank you so much for hopping on the show today. It was great hearing your story, my man. And uh, I can speak for everybody listening that we're super pumped to see where you wind up and we know you're going to do your thing. Thank you. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. Yes, sir.